Okay, this video is going to be about the Cancun Smart Plug. I just uh, ordered it on Amazon, just got it in today. I've played with it for five to ten minutes, and I'm loving it so far. Uh, so if you want to get one of these devices, if you go to Amazon and you search Cancun Smart Plug, you can see it right here. I bought mine for 20 bucks. Now all of a sudden they're new for 15. I wish I saw that when I bought mine. Um, these are cheap little devices running Linux. And the reason I bought uh, one is because uh, I heard that you can get a root shell on it. Because uh, a lot of these devices, uh, are, you need a app for either Android or iPhone. I hate installing unneeded software on my devices, especially proprietary software. So if I could get a device that I can access and control without that, especially if I have a full root shell, uh, that's what I'm, I'm up for. So I plugged it in and uh, it says, the directions say, plug it in, wait 20 seconds, install the app on your device, and then try connecting to it. I plugged it in, waited 20 seconds for it to boot. Uh, I'm at my desktop, so I plugged in a USB Wi-Fi dongle. If I do IF config, uh, you don't see my Wi-Fi device. If I hit uh, dash A, you can see it is there. It just isn't up, so what I would do is sudo IF config the LAN zero up, or whatever your device is called. Now if I do IF config without the A, it's there. And so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to scan uh, the for Wi-Fi connections. So I'm going to say, so this device by default uh, is not encrypted until you get it set up, in which case it will be connected to your network eventually. But today we're just going to connect to it. And since there's no uh, encryption, I'm not, I don't need a network manager. I could just use some commands here in the shell to connect to it. So I'm going to do sudo iwlist and I want to scan WLAN 0. So WLAN 0 scan. Give it a few seconds. Going to find two networks, my home regular router and then this one, uh, OK. Uh, SP3. That's the one we want to connect to. That is the plug. It's acting kind of as a router right now, or at least an access point. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say sudo. Um, and by the way, I'm hitting control L to clear the screen just to keep things clean for you guys. So uh, sudo iwconfig uh, LAN 0, and we want to connect to ESSID of 0k underscore 3. P or SP3. So my device knows to connect to it now. We need to get an IP address from the device. So I'm going to say sudo DHC client or DH client uh, and I'll say WLAN 0. Put a space in there. And it says file exists because I've already connected to it about 10 minutes ago. So it's already given me an IP address, which you may have seen earlier when I did ifconfig. You can see my IP address on the wireless device connected to that right there. So now I need to find the IP address of the device itself. So you could use nmap, but the way I usually do it is I like having um, uh, ARP scan in. And if I just do sudo ARP scan dash L dash, oops, dash L dash capital I and my wireless device, which is WLAN 0. If I hit enter, it's going to do a quick scan and the only other device it finds is this one right here. So what I'm going to start doing now as I'm going to do an nmap, nmap scan on that. And that's going to take a few minutes, or about a minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit, I'm going to open up a new shell here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, Google Chrome, and I'm just going to go to that IP address just to see if there's a web server set up on that. You use whatever web browser you, uh, you want. Um, and it opened up on my second screen here. So here we go. When you go to the device, there is a web server running on it, but this is all you get as the... Um, main index. If I try to go up a directory, it doesn't bring me anywhere. So at least we know there is a web server running on it, and that's a good thing. Now, if we close this and we exit out of this, we still have nmap scanning. Oh, it just finished, and you can see there are three ports open. Uh, port, e, uh, port 53 and port 22, and the port 22 is the reason I bought this device. So um, if I do SSH, and I want to log in as root, give it the IP address, which is 192.168.10.253. Uh, 
Uh, the first time you connect, it's going to say about the security key. You want to type yes to accept that. And by default, from a Google search I did, it's going to be one of three passwords. It's either going to be admin, all lowercase, 1234, or it's going to be P9Z34C. I'll have all this information in the link in the description. Mine was that longer one, all lowercase. So we'll go ahead and type that in, hit enter. Ta-da! We have a root shell on the plug itself. This is great. So uh, just real quick, let's check out some things on this system. I'm going to do, um, uh, well obviously it's running BusyBox. Let's see what tools are installed on BusyBox. Lots of good tools. They even have Cheroot installed, which means if somehow I could get storage on this device, a little more storage than what's available, I could theoretically boot into any uh, distro I want. I could boot uh, Debian in a Cheroot. Um, but really there's other devices that are about the same price for, you know, 15 to 20 dollars that give you USB ports that you can do that sort of thing with. Um, you see there's some other tools here. I don't see um, the HTTPD, the, the, the web server that you can run through um, BusyBox, which I like to use, but we do know there is a web, web server on there, so we just need to figure out where that is, um, which we'll do in a future video. Uh, but let's also just check out how much space is on this device. So I'll do um, df-h, and here you can see we have a few different partitions. The largest partition is about 14 megabytes. It's the temporary partition, uh, which is probably running in RAM. So why don't we see um, what our RAM is. So I'll say free-m, see how the memory, and our total memory is 29 megabytes, so it's probably a 32 megabyte chip. Uh, so that's that obviously it's not a, a powerhouse here. Um, but of course, what is it designed to do? It's designed to turn devices on and off. Um, but real quick, before we get into that last little part, I do want to say, you know, by default, again, you had the password. You'll probably want to change that default password and remember it. But of course, you can use uh, passwd, hit enter. You can type in the password that you want. I'm putting a real short one in just as an example. It's saying too short. I typed it in a second time. It's telling me it's too short, but I'm root, so it's going to let me do that anyway. So if I was to exit out, and reconnect, I can type in my new password. Hey, okay, so the password did take. So now what do we wanna do? We wanna be able to turn devices on and off that we have plugged into this smart plug. So let me go ahead and plug this light in. So plug that in there. And by default, the plug is on, which is a good thing, you know, and in case for some reason you don't have access to it by default, wherever you plug into it will be on. Um, but just like on your desktop, it, you know, uh, you can turn every little LED on and off on your, your computer, your laptop or desktop. If it has little blinky lights on it, you can turn them on and off usually by just um, echoing into a file because in Linux everything is a file. So if we echo, Zero is on, I'm sorry, one is on, zero is off. So if you want to turn it off, we're going to say zero and we're going to put zero into a file. So I'm going to say forward slash sys class LEDs uh, TP, and I'm hitting tab to complete. Uh, so TP link blue uh, relay, and we're going to say brightness. So we're putting zero into brightness and we can turn our device off. Again, same command, putting a one into there, we can turn the light back on or whatever device we have plugged into it. Uh, and of course we can read those values. So if I was to cat that out, I can see that the device is on. And if we turn it off and I cat out that file, I can see that it's off. So we can write scripts to check whether it's on or off. So we can make a toggle switch that turns it on and off. Instead of saying having a different button for on and a different button for off, we can have one button that checks. And we will be making a GUI interface once I figure out the HTTP server on this thing. Um, but of course, I can do like a while loop. Should be able to do something like this. We're gonna go that, no, let's see. I guess we don't need to do a, a while loop. We'll just do, Turn it on, 
sleep for five seconds and then we'll turn it off and then we'll sleep for five seconds and then we'll turn it back on. So when I run this command, we're gonna turn the light on, it's gonna wait five seconds and turn the light off and it's gonna wait another five seconds and then turn the light back on. So obviously lots of stuff we can do, we can do remote access, I can tell you, 10, a little over 10 years, well, yeah, definitely about 15 years ago, I actually worked for a company uh, programming home automation systems. This is, again, 15 years ago, so it was kind of a new thing, big expensive things, big multi-million dollar homes. And one of the features that we could program into them um, that I always thought was a neat idea was the vacation mode. We could program into these systems, um, we could pick certain lights, and put them in as variables into the vacation mode. And so when a person's leaving the house, they'll have a keypad and they can press that vacation mode and we can set a certain time. So we can say, well, after nine o'clock until midnight, randomly turn these lights on and off at a random interval intervals. So, you know, when you go away on vacation, sometimes you'll leave a light on so it looks like somebody's home. Well, this would, change it so if someone was watching your house the lights are different each night and you can see them going on and off at different times so I've always wanted to be able to do that in my own house and now I can with a twenty dollar device uh, probably better if I had two or three put them in different rooms but I can write a script and have it on the device itself after a certain time you know turn these lights on and off you know maybe every 15 or 20 minutes or something like that. And so it'll look like somebody's at home. So that's that's one of my goals with this project. And also again, I'm gonna try to make a web interface so I can access this with my uh, phone or tablet. And also at this point, again, right now I'm connected from my desktop directly to the vi device through Wi-Fi. I want to get it on my network if possible. Of course, that's what it's designed to do, but I need to figure out how to do it without their, um, uh, you know, proprietary application. Worst case scenario, if I can't figure out, although I should be able to, I have a root shell here, I just need to look at what tools they have for networking. Obviously it has the capability of doing it, but let's say I couldn't figure it out. I could always install the device uh, or the app on a uh, virtual machine uh, and then get set up and then remove that virtual machine. So. A few more weeks of this. I hope that you come back next week. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any videos. I hope you found this useful. And as always, I hope that you visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description as well as notes to everything we've done today. And I just hope that you have a great day. Okay, this is an introduction to filmsbychris.com. I'm Chris, that's Chris the K. That's me right there. My daughter Ember, and my wife Jennifer. We pretty much live in the swamps of Florida. I'm a firefighter by day, as well as by night. We work long hours. But that's not why you're here. You're here about the videos I put up on YouTube. These videos are mainly about computers and programming, which means most of my videos look something like this. And if that's what you're interested in, great. If not, that's all right. I do videos on other topics too, such as video editing, special effects, photo editing, 3D design, and music creation. If you are one of my viewers and you enjoy my videos, my Patreon page is a place where you can go to help support my videos. So I ask that you take the time to go to my Patreon page and look at the different levels of rewards you can receive for different levels of backing. There should be a link in the description of this video if you are watching it on YouTube. Otherwise, you can visit patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. And I thank you for your time and your support. Have a great day.